Well, hello, everybody. It's a Monday sports algorithm video. We're going to talk about NHL, NHL playoffs, predictions for today being Monday, April 22nd games. We're going to talk about NBA, talk about basketball playoffs, talk about predictions for Monday's basketball games. And then we'll talk about a review of Sunday's baseball. The projections for Monday will be in a separate video, a private video that's going out for those that have subscribed to the MLB algorithm. So there won't be any Monday predictions in this video of baseball, but we will talk about yesterday. So let's start off with hockey. I always say the hockey algorithm is the worst of the algorithms, even though it's my favorite sport to play and to watch. Um, I'm like, don't buy it. It doesn't work very well. Don't ever listen to me. Always listen to the algorithm. We're already 6-0 and in this playoffs. It keeps winning games. You want to you look at the adjusted power percentage. Now, these are all favorites, so this is nothing special. Basically, uh, the odds makers and the algorithm have been in alignment for these games, and it, it seems to be winning all of them. Um, very close to some exact scores in a few of these games as well. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been really, really good. So there you go. Uh, so doing well. So what about today for hockey, the 22nd? There are four games today. That that time during the hockey playoffs when there's a lot of hockey going on every day. Uh, the 22nd, why are there blanks there? Let's get rid of those blanks. Let's go into the cube real quick and get rid of those blanks. Those blanks are showing up up here. We don't need to see these games. I could just paste them over that, but we won't worry about that. Those games don't matter. Let's go back and refresh. So these are the four games today. You've got Boston barely over Toronto. It does keep doing this where it flips the score. Uh, you don't want to trust the score as much as you want to trust, trust the adjusted power. So it does think that Boston with Swayman in there, it's either Swayman or Olmark. They're trying to figure out who they want to play, but they're going with Swayman, I guess. Um, so barely Boston again. They did win their first game handily, though. Carolina holding the Islanders to fewer goals. These are the games with the, the under, the lowest scoring game should be this Carolina Islander game, and Carolina should probably win again. Frederick Anderson, number one ranked goalie of all the goalies, even more than Hellebuck, I believe. Um, and as you can see, Hellebuck led in six goals last night in the, in the Winnipeg game. That was an amazing game, a Colorado-Winnipeg game, if you caught any of that. So Carolina, Vegas and Dallas, LA, Edmonton. It's the first time this series, the first game of these series are starting tonight. Dallas, Four to two ish type game over Vegas. Vegas likes to perform well in the playoffs, but does say Dallas is a strong team. And Ottinger is another really good goaltender here at 71% rating. And okay, interesting, because this was wrong when I did a video previously. Now it has Edmonton with Skinner over LA. Interesting. I we did a video with my son and we were getting weird numbers and it was favoring LA. Something was wrong in that other video. So here we've got. Edmonton barely edging out this game. Good to know. Once again, it looks like almost all favorites. Apparently, uh, Vegas is getting a slightly favored line over Dallas. So this would be the one area where the algorithm slightly differs with the odds makers. A lot of money in Vegas, apparently, on Vegas. So today, it's Boston, Carolina, Dallas, and Edmonton for those looking to try to grab all four games. Now let's go over to NBA. NBA... Since I started updating this thing again on the 19th as the play-in games and playoffs started, that's right, everybody, undefeated 10-0. We have not missed a playoff game in hockey or basketball yet this year. And what's even more intriguing about the NBA algorithm is we hit three underdogs, which means the odds makers went 7-3 and three and we still went 10-0. and 0. So when I say the algorithm beats the odds makers regularly, it is the standard. This is what I'm talking about. We had the Bucks and the Clippers. I bet them yesterday and I won. We had the Pelicans over Sacramento earlier in the week. They won. I mean, that's just, it's just, it's, I would say it's amazing, except it's standard for the NBA algorithm. The NBA algorithm performs great. Basketball is a great game. So how do you update this thing for the next day? It's one of the easiest algorithms to update. There's only two things you need to update when the playoffs start, because there are no more regular season stats to add in here. There are two places to go. First is the odds compiler sheet. When you go to Rotowire and you go, you go to Rotowire and you go to sports betting, you go to NBA odds, and you export the Excel file with the NBA odds, it comes right here. Looks like this. 
you just grab this. You don't even have to enable editing up top. It's actually better if you don't because the time comes in in a better format. So you just copy it without even enable editing on that export. And we go into the NBA algorithm and you just paste it. I paste mass match destination formatting. It doesn't matter. Any paste you paste will work. And you have the games now. So that's the first thing you do. And we get rid of the odds. Then we go to the injury report. Also on Rotowire, it's Rotowire Fantasy Stats Injury Report. This is the injury report that you download. You copy that. It's very important that you do the injury report. It's the most important part of this. Then you're just going to paste this right here in the injury sheet. Paste. And we'll make sure that some people didn't come off. Yeah, it looks good. It's, it's a full injury report. Then you go to the injury pivot table and you right click inside of this table and you choose refresh and you've now updated the injury report. And now you go to the results pivot sheet and you right click inside and you choose refresh. And once you do that, you'll see that the date 422 now pops up here. These are today's games. What do they say? Ah, let's find out. They say there are three games today. Is that right? Are there three games today? I thought there were four. Maybe there are three. Let's go. Let's double check. I thought there were four games today. No, there are three games. Three games. It's the Nuggets, the Knicks, the Cavs. Um, notice the odds makers clearly have caught up with us. They don't like losing. They don't like losing to the algorithm every day. That's for sure. Now, there are some areas of, there are some issues here, though. Um, so while it does have the Nuggets, the Knicks, and the Cavs winning this game, assuming Cetris Paribus, all other things being equal and there were no injuries, there are some injuries. And what's popping out first is that the Lakers are not healthy. I don't know what's going on there. If we look at the Lakers injury report here, uh, there's a lot of game time decision guys. So some of these guys may be playing. It's probably like LeBron or something. Yeah, LeBron is game time decision with an ankle may play. So some of those guys might play on the Lakers. So that injury report you're seeing of 83%, that might change and it might go up, meaning some of those guys will play. But the margin really favors the Nuggets and the minus 290 line is actually not that bad for a 10% margin. So the Nuggets probably are going to win this game. As you can see, the Lakers are a little bit hurting and they would lose anyway. Knicks and Sixers are about tied when it comes to injuries. The line of minus 210 is actually not good for only a 4% margin. So the Knicks probably win this game, but the value isn't really there. This needs to be like a minus 120, minus 130 line to, to be appropriate. And both teams have a little bit of injuries, less than 90%. So if we lose one of these games outright, it's probably this Knicks-Sixers game, which can go either way. And Embiid was out for a lot of the year, and that kind of affects the Sixers stats. So I'm probably going to stay away from this game just because – it's not worth it. Now, the Cavaliers magic game. Cavs are at 88% health and the magic are healthy. So this line is even worse for this game. Now, what are the Cavaliers injuries? Let's find out to see if those people are out or whether or not they're game time decisions. As we look for the Cavs in here, so we have, oh, they're out. So people are out. So... When we look at the results of the NBA algorithm tomorrow, if the Cavaliers lose, you're going to hear me say, well, you know what? I'm not surprised. They were at 88% health and they were the lowest margin on here. And you don't, you do not play them. If anything, the magic plus five and a half is probably the correct spread play because the margins are low enough and the injuries on Cavaliers below 90% with people that are out, not even game time decision means the magic are probably going to give them a very difficult game. So the Nuggets are really the only safe money line pick of all three. Uh, the other two, you could stay away from them or potentially you probably want to take the Magic plus the points. Or if you're really risking it, the Magic to win this game because of the health situation on Cleveland. But these are these are going to be toss ups and I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to be upset if the Cavaliers lose because the. the there, there are signs that they would they would lose due to injury. So that's the quick way. And that's how you update the NBA algorithm. 10 and 0, we'll see. I don't even know how to call this a perfect day. I feel like if the Magic cover or even win, I, I almost don't want to call this a loss because it's telling you that the Magic are going to make this game really close. I'd say if Cleveland wins the game by less than five and a half points, it's probably a perfect call from the algorithm. Like they barely, barely win, but, but it's not by a lot.
Um, so let's go over to baseball and talk about the baseball day yesterday. So a lot of people have been following baseball. It's been having a really nice run recently. Uh, there, are, there are people who played the pick of the day being Washington yesterday at this plus 145 line. They win six to nothing. Houston, just a reputation that Houston is holding over from last year that is not transferring to this year. They're not playing well. So that worked out. And the Miami game also wins. So if you just use the algorithm and don't listen to me and go with the number one pick of the day, you also get a win out of Miami at plus 114. Would have been an amazing day if either Kansas City or Pittsburgh could have won a game. Kansas City, this was a regression to the mean game on Kansas City, meaning Seth Lugo, who had pitched phenomenal throughout the year, just didn't have one of those games today. And of course, it's sports. Anything's going to happen. So this, this was a game that just didn't work out. You can see they didn't produce, and the algorithm completely gets this game wrong as Baltimore wins 5 nothing, and Kansas City just doesn't put up any runs at all. Also, Pittsburgh doesn't do it against Boston. This game almost completely flipped. Um, Winkowski, I guess, pitched a good game, or did they have another? I don't know what happened here. I didn't watch this game, but uh, had either one of those teams win, wow, we would have had an amazing day up top. But we still had a profitable day up top because Detroit at an underdog line also wins. So when I mentioned playing the top five teams that were above 20% margin yesterday on straight bets, I said there's an 80% chance that this is more than that, that it'll be profitable playing those five teams on straight bets. Yeah, yeah, you make 35% of your money. You make 1.7 units playing those five games equally because you're three underdogs one. I mean, that that's the point of having a bunch of underdogs at the top of the list. So, you know, not perfect, obviously, losing the Kansas City-Pittsburgh game. Those games also, oddsmakers had those teams. So talk about us just destroying the oddsmakers. I mean, oh, my gosh. Um, the only thing the oddsmakers got better was Philadelphia winning this game more than we thought they would against the White Sox. They caught the Yankees, San Diego, and Seattle winning this game. Um, we, got, however, caught Texas at the bottom. But you want to pay more attention to the games at the top and you want to look at margin and everything below 10% margin. Those are closer to toss up games anyway. So even though we do not show profitability betting the entire list, I don't recommend betting the entire list. This is saying these games are supposed to be close. So under our combination string 488, it was an eight and eight day, but it was a profitable day up top. And that's what's important. Now, there were other combinations that did better. There were five combinations that actually went 12 and three. I took a look at them and they were like, let's take a look at one of them. Let's go with combination like 491. I'll show you what that does. It's not a combination string I want to go with today and I'll show you why. So if you go with 491, you'll see that this combination string is heavily weighted on innings pitch per game, pitcher whip, uh, and average runs for average runs for was a really determinate stat. It's just the team's average runs for a game. You get a list that looks like this. And while you still have Washington on top and it moves Philadelphia further up, which, which I liked, uh, you get Seattle, you get Detroit, you get Cleveland, you still lose with Kansas city. You lose with Atlanta and you don't get Texas. And you win a bunch of these games down here. It looks great, but it's, I mean, it doesn't use lineup at least. Line, actually, it's not that bad. I don't, I don't know why I'm I'm knocking it. I don't want to be heavily weighted on these two stats down here. I just feel like they're not great stats to use. But you know, this does have a twelve and three day, and, it, and importantly, it has these underdog picks. Uh, does it have Miami? Where's Miami on here? It has Miami all the way down here? They still win. But you get Milwaukee over St. Louis. And look at this interesting. You get Milwaukee at St. Louis and you get them projected to put up two runs and they put up two runs. I don't know. Maybe we do want to use this combination tomorrow, today. I don't know. That's a, that's a very interesting look for the day. Anytime you can predict the team is going to win scoring two runs and they win scoring two runs, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it actually had the projected score favoring St. Louis, but the margin was favoring Milwaukee. How interesting because Sonny Gray had a zero ERA. That's why, but that's, that's amazing, right? It says that 
that Milwaukee kind of powers through them in this game, even though Sonny Gray is a good pitcher and they barely win it by holding Milwaukee to less. These scores look phenomenal, On honestly. Maybe we will use this on Monday. They look great. Scores look great. And maybe we do. I, that's what I'm saying. Never listen to me. Always listen to the algorithm. I'm, I'm tempted to use this combination today and abandon 488 for the day because it still has our underdogs on here. And in this combination, you win one, two. You have four underdogs on this list, and it wins all of them. Wins all of them. Wow. Um, but you don't get Texas because it had Atlanta. All right, I guess we will go with this. I was sitting, let's think we were, but that's what we'll go with. And I'm I'm gonna, you know, end this video and then I'm gonna do the private video for baseball subscribers. All these algorithms are available for sale on kenbraverman.com. You can pick them up there. We'll hopefully keep it running and I will come up with another pick of the day for baseball. We we're five days in a row or something, something like that. Um, we'll hopefully keep that running and see what pops up to the top of the list. Because as you can see, under this combination especially, you win five out of the top six. And in this combination, you are profitable all the way down. There is not a point, if you bet every team on this combination string, there is not a point at which you could have lost money if you made straight bets on every team. Every single uh, level, at every single margin level, you are profitable, which is what that is showing over here. And you end up making 41% on the day if you bet all these teams under this call. I guess we have to go with this combination string tomorrow, today. All right, so good luck, everyone. I hope your picks continue to be winning, and we'll keep it running. And I'll do a video for baseball next and watch some hockey tonight and have a good time. All right, good luck. May all of your picks be winning. Go Vegas. Even though, no, we're not going for Vegas. Vegas is supposed to lose to Dallas. But I'm so, I might actually be rooting for Vegas.